Um, it's May 4th. So this is called Star Wars Day. May the Force be with you. They say may the 4th be with you. That's something that some of my students understand. Um, other students just don't know that much about Star Wars or the phrase may the force be with you has absolutely no meaning to them. So it takes a lot of explaining. So I'm not sure how it is with younger people in North America. Maybe it's the same thing. But uh, this t-shirt, I bought this years and years ago. And one thing you can see is if I do this, this is where the shoulders are. Okay, this is where the sleeves start. Okay, this is, the tag says XL, and I, I think I bought this at The Gap in Canada a long time ago, years and years and years ago. And um, I never wore it until I got back to Japan. I know when I got back to Japan, I took it out, tried it on, and it was ridiculous. It was so huge. I couldn't wear it outside. So this has been relegated to summertime pajama t-shirt. And I haven't worn it very often. It's still in basically the original condition. Because it's actually more like 3XL or 4XL. This is, it was mislabeled. And I just looked at it, XL. I wanted a bit more range in my colors. And that's really sad if you think like beige expands your color palette. I tend to go for gray. And once in a while I'll go brown or green. Recently I bought orange, but I don't know. I just don't really care what I wear. But anyway, when I go back to Japan and tried this on, it was huge. Like you could wear um, football pads under this and probably still have space. This is not XL. It goes almost down to my knees. It's ridiculous. It's not extra large. So anyway, um, I wanted to talk about this phrase, a well-turned ankle. Now I've always understood this to mean um, attractive legs, but it's a very conservative kind of expression. You know, this means, you know, good looking, attractive, and specifically focusing on the legs, but a well-turned ankle. And this harkens back to when women typically wore floor-length skirts. They didn't wear trousers or slacks or jeans typically and if you watch things like Little House on the Prairie even farm women were wearing floor-length skirts or floor-length um, dresses when they were working if that's accurate um, so getting a glimpse of someone's uncovered ankle their bare ankle without their lace-up boots without their floor-length or ground-length skirt or dress was probably considered a bit scandalous, like a bit shocking, like, oh, I just got this little glimpse of of skin that I normally wouldn't see unless we were married. And of course, who knows, like when you go swimming, you know, you're obviously showing more, but they had like ankle to neck women's swimwear. And even men wore knees to neck short-sleeved uh, short swimsuits. But um, of course people did wear other things but this is very European or just very conservative this type of phrase a well-turned ankle but I kind of get it because now it's May 4th so in March um, in early March the Japanese government relaxed a lot of the guidelines for the pandemic but people didn't really embrace it yet and um, officially May 8th is when the categorization, categorization of um, SARS-CoV-2 will drop from level five, which is the highest in Japan, to level two, which this, which is the same as you know, seasonal flu. And they could have done this at the beginning of the year. They could have done this last year. And you know, other countries did this quite a while ago. I believe Canada did this a year ago. So in, from May of 2022, I don't think people were wearing masks very much when they went out in Canada, unless it was specifically required in certain places. Um, so May 8th will be after this Golden Week period. And Golden Week is from like April 29th until May 5th, although companies tend to tack on a few other days to make it a full week or longer than a full week. Um, other companies adhere to what's on the calendar. So technically May 3rd, 4th, and 5th 
our calendar holidays. So I work May 2nd, I'm going to work May 6th. Um, I get the calendar holidays off. Um, but after the Golden Week period, which is, you know, a fairly big travel period, they decided that's when they're going to lower the classification down to level two. And then I'm sure I'll see more and more people without masks on the street. I've seen uh, an increasing number of people without masks on the street and on the train. Um, where I work, um, masks are optional. So some people, you know, have already started um, coming maskless. Um, employees and and students. Um, and I'm sure that'll increase um, when I get back to my main branches after this golden week period. And that brings me to a well-turned ankle. So there are lots of people I've met after the beginning of the pandemic and I've never seen their full face unless they had a Skype lesson. Um, there was one student, I passed her in the hallway to the restrooms outside of my school and I didn't know who she was. I just nodded to her and she looked at me and I thought she was uh, a client at another office on the same floor and then she was in the lobby and I looked more closely and you know when I looked at her eyes I knew who she was but seeing the whole face I didn't have any idea who she was and there are going to be a lot of people that I won't recognize initially because I've never seen their full face and it's interesting when when all you see are the eyes you tend to fill in the the blank with you know what you think would be the matching lower part of the face based on other people you know with the same kind of eyes or just based on your own kind of extrapolation of facial features and it's often totally different there are people I've met with their mask off and they didn't look anything like I thought they would and with their eyes they reminded me of people that I knew with their eyes only visible and then when the mask was down they didn't look at all like the person I envisioned because it was just you know my my brain taking what was familiar and painting in what was missing so now I've got this concept like you know I get a glimpse of someone's nose I they'll raise their mask and drink something from a pet bottle and I'll think oh I shouldn't look that's so scandalous I'm seeing their nose I'm seeing their their mouth oh my god it's been you know four years since people were brazen enough to just show their lower half in public like that and what a well carved chin what a, an astonishing jawline you know what a what an intriguingly shaped nose i'm just thinking you know based on this um i kind of get it you know if you're just conditioned to not seeing things if you're basically programmed that certain things are not for public display it is confusing when suddenly they are so this will pass very soon you know because seeing people without their masks on is normal I only that only happens when I'm outside in public you know watching TV watching movies everyone shows their whole face but there are just people um, that I've known for years and I've never seen what they look like so it is something that will take a little getting used to and um, also on the street on the train I'll probably keep wearing my mask on the train just out of an etiquette until I get tired of it but there are other things to consider like the flu you know it's not only in pandemics where we have to be careful and speaking of the trains um, slowly since the guidelines relaxed in March especially at the end of March and then through April the number of people using the trains when I use the trains has increased a lot um, when I go to work you know I can always sit the trains rarely so crowded that all the seats are taken but there have been a few times when even when I go to work I don't go during rush hour um, when I go to work there were no seats on the train which is something that changed a lot in the pandemic um, 
there were always tons of empty seats on the train. So this would mean that people are moving around more, um, students are not doing remote learning at all, they're going to school, um, workers are doing telework less often, so they're going to their office or moving between their offices and clients' offices more frequently. Um, but when I come home, packed, you know, I usually don't get a chance to sit these last couple of weeks. And it's not its not a problem, it's only 20 minutes. I can stand for 20 minutes, but I think my body has, you know, gotten out of the habit of standing for such a long time. And I sometimes got sciatica in the in the lower right part of my back, you know, around above my right hip. That's where I generally get it. And it probably comes from other problems like when I was on crutches for three and a half months a long time ago when my left foot was broken and my right leg was getting a lot of use. I kept it centered under me so I could balance probably with the crutches and the right ankle, right knee, right hip joint took a lot more wear, especially going up and down stairs in this escalator-less place. So many stations didn't have escalators at all at that time that, uh, yeah, I, I can really feel, you know, wow, my body's not used to standing like this anymore. But in the morning, it's always fine. Just when I go home, I'm standing on the train, I can feel it flaring up a little bit. Then when I walk home, there's there are some twinges, but it never settles into full sciatica. And I used to have it fairly often. I think I was just sleeping in bad positions. And uh, it is really debilitating. Anyone out there who has sciatica, I'll write it down in case there are people who don't know what it is and want to look it up. Sciatica. It is not pleasant. So if you've had it, you know what I mean. And uh, there are certain stretches that I can do to alleviate it. But generally, you know, I just don't sit or sleep or move in ways that would cause it to flare up. But now, having to stand on the train, you know, every night when I go home after work, you know, it is something I've got to pay attention to because I am not young anymore. I have to just admit that. Although mentally, I'm really childish. Anyway, um, I was planning to make a video for every day of this Golden Week period, even the two days that I was working. Sunday I didn't make one. Tuesday I did, uh, no. Sunday I didn't make one. Monday I did. Tuesday night when I came home from work I was planning to, but I didn't. And then yesterday, Wednesday, I was planning to make two or three to clear up the, s the Sunday I missed and the Tuesday I missed and then one for the Wednesday, but yesterday I didn't. Now, one thing I did was Tuesday night after work, um, well, on the Monday when I was off, I took my long walk by the river, hit some supermarkets, did some shopping. That's about 45 minutes altogether, but the actual walking is probably 30 to 35, so that's about three kilometers at my normal walking pace. Um, Tuesday after work, I got off at Kamoi Station and walked to my apartment. That's also about three kilometers by Tsurumi River, you know, to Ondagawa and then to Auto no Shingo, which is pretty near my apartment. That's, you know, auto traffic signal. And then yesterday I walked to Albadai to go to Yamaya and buy my juices and whatnot. So that's a 45 minute walk. And according to Google Maps, it's about 4.3 kilometers, but plus other walking I do. In the meantime, it's actually probably four and a half. So that means I've walked over 10 kilometers in this holiday and I'm planning to go out. The weather's nice and walk maybe by the river to Kamoi and back. That'll be six, which will put me at 16 kilometers of walking, recreational walking, essentially, for this holiday. So that's one of my plans for today. But first I'm gonna have something to eat and load up on some protein. But I wanted to share this well-turned ankle and get a video in the pipeline so thank you for watching
and I'll try to make another couple of videos today after I get out of my gigantic pajama t-shirt. Thanks for watching.